So if you've watched my channel for the last couple weeks, you'll know that I'm in the process of kind of fortifying my privacy a little bit. And all this was spawned by the last past fiasco. And over the course of this next year, I've decided that I'm going to try to be more conscientious when it comes to my privacy and my data and all that stuff. So I've already talked about a couple things, but today what I want to discuss is my browser strategy. So over the course of the last two years or so, I've switched browsers many different times. I've made many different videos. I've switched away from Firefox, I've gone back to Firefox, I've switched to Cute Browser, I've gone back to Firefox, I switched to Brave, I went back to Firefox, I switched to Edge, I went to fire, back to Firefox, I switched to several other browsers, I went back to Firefox, you get the idea. I always come crawling back to Firefox, because Firefox is pretty good, it's open source, and it does most of the things that I like it to do, and specifically it allows me to alter the way that looks more than any other browser out there because of user chrome right so i truly like firefox despite the fact that i'm always kind of in the back of my mind looking for something better but now that i'm thinking more about my privacy i've started to consider the fact that one browser really isn't enough and the reason why i say that is because what i want to do is kind of compartmentalize my web browsing so Unfortunately, Google is going to be continue to be a part of my life. Whether I like it or not, my Google account can't go away. I use it for YouTube. I use it for my Google Docs, which I have to use for work. So, unfortunately, I'm still going to be a consumer of Google products, whether I like it or not. But I want to compartmentalize those things into their own browser. Now, I know there are ways to do this within, within like one browser. Like there are Firefox profiles. You could technically use those, but those are kind of, at least from my experience, kind of a pain in the butt in order to switch between them. So what I've decided to do is have a multi-browser strategy. And this is going to play into when I eventually start virtualizing more of my stuff later on in the year. But right now, what I've decided to do is... Anything that I have to be signed into is going to be in one browser. So that includes Google. If I'm signed into Facebook for whatever reason, because I still have a Facebook account for family reasons. If I'm signed into Mastodon, things like that. Anything that I'm signed into will be in one browser and that's fine. I just will know that in that browser, I know I'm going to be tracked because there's very little I can do about it. Now, obviously, I still plan to take some precautionary measures in that browser to limit the amount of tracking that happens. So I'll turn off as many of the trackers as possible. I'll use uBlock Origin and all the stuff that you can do in order to kind of pre prevent yourself from being tracked. But it's still going to happen. And of course, if you're signed into something, you're going to get tracked whether you like it or not, no matter what your browser settings are. So that one browser is going to be where I do all my work when I have to be signed into something. And then I'm going to have another browser where I never sign into anything. And it's going to be a completely different browser. It's not going to be a copy of the same browser. Right now I'm thinking about it being Cute Browser because I, I've always liked Cute Browser and I've always wanted to give it a true and honest to God try, like something that I stick with for multiple months and see if I can actually make it work. And that's where the majority of my browsing and internet activity is going to happen when I don't have to be signed into something. So the idea here is to ensure that I have containerized, if you want to use a, a hot buzzword, all of my browsing history and stuff like that into places where I can kind of have as much control over it as possible. Now, I am considering, like I said, cute browser for one of these. The, it's the other browser that I haven't quite decided on yet. And I'm pretty sure that it's not going to be Firefox, but I don't think that I'm going to go away from the Firefox family of browsers. I think it's going to be LibreWolf. I've tried LibreWolf in the past. I've been unsatisfied with it in the past simply because when you are logged into something, it tends to log you out even if you haven't remember cookies and stuff like that. And in the past, I, I despise having to log into stuff every time I open the browser. Like I wanted to just stay logged in, especially these days when you have to use 2FA for everything. I don't want to have to re-log into everything. Now I understand trying to be more privacy and data conscientious. Leaving something logged in all the time is not the best practice. I can understand that and maybe, at least with some things, I can log out when I'm done with them and then log back in when I go back. But things like the YouTube channel, which I'm almost constantly at, and uh, things like Mastodon and stuff like that, I don't want to have to sign out, right? I want to just have to be able to... So, like Mastodon is actually open all the time in a browser tab, in a pin tab, and 
signing out of that when I'm done with it, even if I'm not ever done with it. I, I don't know. It's just that that whole process is something that I'm going to have to think about in my mind in order to actually, you know, figure out the best way to go about not only protecting my privacy a little bit, but also maintaining some form of convenience. So that's something that I'm going to have to think about. And like I said, I'm considering LibreWolf. There are other ones called, I think there's one called Waterfox out there. I've never tried that one. I think there are other options. So that second browser where it's going to be stuff where most of my stuff is going to be logged in is something that I'm going to have to figure out what that's going to be. So the whole point of my video is that I think that for, for many, t for at least for the last two years or so, I've been very uninterested let's just say, in having a multi-browser strategy. A lot of people I know who have commented on my videos about browsers in the past have told me, use more than one browser because there is no perfect browser out there and the best way to have all the features that you want and have more control is to use multiple browsers. But I've been very resistant to it because it seems like such a hassle, right? If I want to visit something, I just want to open up a browser and go. And it's much easier if that browser is the same browser every single time, especially if you have that browser open all the time. Like I have Firefox open all the time, so I just go there and go to the website that I need to go to. I don't have to consciously think about what browser to open depending on where I'm going. And that's going to be the biggest challenge of this is to actually follow the plan, right? If I'm going to go watch a YouTube video and I don't need to be logged in to do so, I need to remember that I can't just go to Firefox, which will probably always be open, and watch the YouTube video. I need to go to Cute Browser or whatever I choose and go there to watch the, the YouTube video or whatever it happens to be, right? So actually following along with the plan is probably going to be the hardest step because habits are really hard to get over, right? I'm very I'm very habit oriented and right now my habit is to go to Firefox and do whatever I need to do. Splitting that into two different places where each uh, browser has its own use case is going to take some alteration of muscle memory. So that's going to be a process that I'm definitely going to have to deal with over the next few months as I get used to this new plan that I have in order to, you know, combat my data being literally everywhere for free, right? So that's step one of my browser strategy. Step two will be to slowly eliminate accounts that I don't need. And this has less to do with the browser and more to do with the internet in general, obviously. But I have accounts to a lot of different things that I don't really need anymore. So I'm going to slowly try to get myself away from having a Facebook account. And uh, I've, like I said, I've kept that because of family and how I'm going to get the rest of my family to not keep me on Facebook. I don't know yet. That's something that I want to do. I've already deleted both of my Instagram accounts. That happened in December. So that's something that I've gone away from. I probably will keep Mastodon because it's open source and not horrible. But that's probably my only social account other than YouTube that I'm going to keep. Well, Odyssey, I suppose. But those three are the only ones that I want to keep. But I have accounts for other things. Like I still have a Twitter account, even though I don't post to it. I also have a personal Twitter account that I've had since 2007 or 2008, something like that, that one's going to be hard to give up because, <laughs> you know, it, it it's the first social account that I really ever had other than Facebook. And, you know, I've put a lot of effort into it, even if I don't have a ton of followers. And there's a lot of people on there that I follow that I have no other way of, you know, kind of interacting with. So uh, that's going to be one that's going to be hard to get rid of, even if I don't interact on it very often. I don't know. It's going to be something to think about in the future. But there are a lot of accounts like that that I can jettison over the next month or so to try to remove my footprint from the internet in certain places where it doesn't really need to be. So those are the two areas that I wanted to talk about in terms of the internet today in my privacy journey. I don't know. These videos really haven't been doing all that great because I don't I guess privacy isn't something that a lot of people care about if they're on YouTube, I guess. I mean, I, that makes a whole lot of sense because if you're on YouTube, you've pretty much given up, right? You've laid down and handed Google your data. Uh, I'm right there with you all. But so the, the these videos haven't done all that well, but I'm going to keep doing them. Doing them. They're my, it's, it's my journey and I want to document it a little bit. So that's it for this video. If you uh, like these videos, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment and all that stuff. Hack the ag algorithm, as Mental Outlaw would say. Uh, I truly do appreciate all that stuff. If you want to 
Follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You, you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. You can support me on LiberaPay or YouTube. Both of those links will be in the video description. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. I know I say it the same way every single day, so it kind of sounds like I've memorized it, which I have, but it doesn't mean I mean it any less. So thank you so much for your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.